Uh, good afternoon to all of you. In the previous class, uh, we started discussing about the overall heat transfer coefficient. You know the overall heat transfer coefficient equation, and this equation is available in the data hand, uh, heat heat and mass transfer data handbook. Uh, not only available for based on the outside surface area, the based on the inside surface area also the overall heat transfer coefficient equation is available, and that can be. Uh, used to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient based on either inside surface area or the outside surface area and you come across the sum of the values uh, for overall heat transfer coefficient depending upon the situations now uh, next we started discussing about the uh, in that uh, uh, overall heat transfer coefficient you, you come across the the falling factor falling is nothing but it is the uh, formation of scale deposition on the either in the inside surface of the uh, tube or outside surface of the tube that will offer resistance for the flow of heat that is called the the falling uh, a resistance and reciprocal of this scale thermal resistance is known as the uh, a falling factor and you also know the the values for the falling resistances or the falling factor and these values are also available in the uh, heat and mass transfer data handbook depending upon the situation you can choose the appropriate value and use to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient based on either inside surface area or the outside surface area and there are uh, different categories of uh, falling uh, uh, <coughs> uh, by which it occurs uh, variety of categories we have discussed as well as and you came to know about the economic penalty arising out of the polling factor or the polling resistance and at, at the same time after this overall heat transfer coefficient we discussed about the thermal analysis of heat exchangers thermal analysis of heat exchanger can be done or can be carried out by two methods one is the uh, lmtd method that is the logarithmic mean temperature difference method and another one is the effectiveness or ntu method lmtd method of analysis heat exchanger can be uh, used when uh, we know all the terminal temperatures that is inlet temperature of hot fluid exit temperature of hot fluid inlet temperature of cold fluid and exit temperature of the cold fluid and you know all these temperature values we can use this lmtd method of analysis suppose a customer comes to you uh, when you, uh, let us uh, assume that you are working in a uh, uh, heat exchanger manufacturing industry a customer comes to you and he will give the uh, a requirement to, to do, design a heat exchanger he says that i know only the inlet temperature of my hot fluid uh, uh, inlet temperature of my cold fluid uh, other data he will give and uh, he will ask you to design a heat exchanger for him then when you know the only inlet conditions you know the only inlet conditions then the only way to uh, design heat exchanger is by effectiveness method when you know the all the terminal temperatures lmtd method is uh, lmtd method analysis is possible when you know the only inlet conditions the only way is by effectiveness method and at the same time we have developed the the lmtd logarithmic mean temperature difference equation delta tm uh, for uh, parallel flow heat exchanger as well as counter flow heat exchanger similar expressions whatever the equ equation uh, the, the, the logarithmic mean temperature difference equation we have developed in the previous class delta tm for a parallel flow heat exchanger as well as the counter flow heat exchanger similar expression can be developed for cross flow as well as multi pass cell and tube heat exchangers all these equations uh, lmtd equation for a parallel flow lmtd equation for a counter flow lmtd equation for cross flow as well as uh, multi pass cell and tube heat exchangers they are available in all the heat transfer textbooks as well as in your heat and mass transfer data handbook you can choose the appropriate delta tm equation depending upon your requirement though uh, similar equation can be developed for uh, cross flow as well as multi pass cell and tube heat exchangers resulting equations are complicated due to complex flow conditions because whenever you come across the uh, cross flow uh, fluid may be mixed or unmixed or multi pass and cell uh, uh, multi pass cell and tube heat exchangers so number of passes we need to consider uh, due to here the flow in these such situations is very complex one so the resulting equations are complicated because of the complex flow conditions under such circumstances uh, the lmtd equation is used by introducing the correction factor f whatever we have developed in the previous classes now in that case situation the heat transfer equation with correction factor f is given by this equation q is equal to uh, u a f into delta tm where u, uh, q is you know heat transfer rate uh, u is the overall heat transfer coefficient a is the surface area f is the correction factor for cross flow as well as multi pass cell and tube heat exchangers delta tm is the logarithmic mean temperature difference 
the value of f this correction factor depends upon two parameters one is the geometry of the heat exchanger as well as second one is the hot and cold fluid temperatures the value of f totally depends on the geometry of the heat exchanger and hot and cold fluid temperatures the limiting value of correction factor f is equal to 1 Uh, limiting value for correction factor is f when the value of correction factor f is one definitely it is a counter flow heat exchanger and the value of f is less than one for cross flow as well as multi pass cell and tube heat exchangers the limiting value of correction factor f equal to one means it is a counter flow heat exchanger and the value of f and the value of f uh, is less than one for cross flow as well as multi pass cell and tube heat exchangers and this value of f remember depends upon the geometry of the heat exchanger as well as hot and cold fluid temperatures then question arises how to obtain the value of f the value of f is obtained from the graphs based on the values of r and p so uh, if you refer to your heat and mass transfer data and book the correction factor graphs are given depending upon the the type of heat exchanger uh, the and the depending upon the value of r and p we can choose the the value of correction factor f here p is given by this e e equation uh, t2 small t2 minus small t1 divided by capital t1 minus small t1 this is p and r is equal to capital t1 minus capital t2 divided by small t2 minus small t1 so it is possible to choose the value of correction factor f based on the values of r and p available in the heat and mass transfer data and book as well as all heat uh, transfer textbooks contain these graphs we have to choose it is possible to choose the value of f depending upon the values of p and r where p is equal to it is small t2 minus t1 divided by capital t1 minus t1 and r equal to t1 minus t2 divided by t2 minus t1 the subscripts 1 and 2 represent the inlet and exit temperatures subscripts 1 and 2 in these equations uh, equations of p and r represent the inlet and exit temperatures capital t and small t represent the cell and tube side temperatures capital t and small t represent the cell and tube temperatures side temperatures to tube, tube side sorry tube side temperatures the correction factor for a boiler and condenser suppose if you come across the phase change either it may be a boiling of a fluid phase change occurs wherein the liquid is converted into a vapor or condenser where the the vapor is converted into a liquid in that situation e f equal to 1 for a boiling whenever you come across boiling process or a condensing process <coughs> you need not worry about the value of f definitely straight away we can take f equal to 1 r equal to 0 in the previous uh, slide we uh, you, you uh, we come across the uh, r equation uh, which is r is what capital t1 minus t2 divided by small t2 minus small t1 if this value of r equal to 0 means it corresponds to the phase change it may be either boiling or condensation on the cell side suppose if r value tends to infinity r value tends to infinity it indicates the phase change on the tube side so depending upon the value of r whether it is r equal to 0 or r equal to in r tends to infinity we can say phase change occurring on the cell side or the tube side r equal to 0 corresponds to the phase change it may be either boiling or condensation it is occurring on the cell side suppose if r tends to infinity then that indicates that phase change on the tube side now we can see that uh, the various graphs uh, from which we can Uh, select the correction factor depending upon the situation practical situation so this graph what you are observing now it is a correction factor chart for cross flow and uh, cell and tube heat exchanger okay here x axis you can see it is the value of p the colored lines are the values of r okay equation r again given here p equation is also given it is a this graph is for one cell pass and 2 4 6 any multiple of two two passes you can see this uh, the arrangement is also given it is our cell and one two pass and two two pass similarly you can have uh, within the cell uh, either it may be four pass six pass eight pass any multiple of uh, pass you can use this uh, value of uh, uh, correction factor you can choose and remember 
uh, the problem with uh, using the graphs is we have to locate the points correctly otherwise we will end up with the errors and the error tol uh, tolerable is 5% of the the whatever the theoretical value so that means when you are going for the uh, choosing the values from the graphs you have to be at most careful to locate the correct points so this graph it is for two cell passes you can see this is one cell pass and this is another cell two cell and one tube two tube th third one and fourth one so that means this graph is for two cell passes and four eight twelve any multiple of four four eight twelve sixteen twenty like that two passes you can use this graph here correction factor is again on the y-axis this is value of p p is given here equation for p is given here r is also given the r equation these are the uh, lines for r colored lines so you can choose uh, the correction factor if it is a two cell pass and uh, four eight twelve tube passes so now this uh, uh, graph is single pass cross flow with both fluids unmixed this is a cross flow heat exchanger single pass both fluids unmixed okay here uh, t1 is entering here hot fluid is entering here it is coming out it is cold fluid entering here and it is coming out again you know the the values of uh, equations for p and r given here colored lines are for r the this y axis is for p values and uh, sorry x axis is for p values and y axis is for correction factor it is varying between 0.5 to 1 depending upon the values of r and p if it is a single pass cross flow with both fluids unmixed we can choose this uh, uh, value of correction factor from this graph suppose if the heat exchanger is cross flow with one fluid mixed and other fluid unmixed okay you come across the uh, in the big uh, introduction chapter there you have seen the uh, both uh, fluid unmixed one fluid mixed okay uh, the only if the fluid is flowing over the tube uh, tube bundles uh, fluid is flowing through the tubes hot fluid and the uh, cold fluid is flowing over the surface of the tube any without any uh, compartments then it is one fluid is mixed there okay it can move in any direction whereas the the fluid which is flowing through a tubes it is unmixed if such situation in the introduction part you have come across this you have seen this uh, sketch of this uh, one fluid mixed and other fluid unmixed in that situation we have to use this uh, particular graph based on the values of p and r r and p equations are given here the x axis is for p color lines are for r you can uh, correction factor is on the y axis so it is varying between 0.1 to 1 you can choose uh, the correction factor f if it is a cross flow single pass cross flow heat exchanger with one fluid mixed and the other fluid unmixed and we are all aware that this uh, lmtd method is useful when the inlet and exit exit temperatures of hot and cold fluids are known this method lmtd logarithmic mean temperature difference method is useful when the inlet and exit temperatures of hot and cold fluids are known suppose it is also possible to use lmtd method of analysis if you know only the inlet conditions but because of this logarithmic logarithmic function involved in the lmtd equation it may be a parallel flow heat exchanger or counter flow heat exchanger but it uh, when you use this lmtd method knowing the only inlet conditions it is it involves an iterative procedure due to logarithmic function and it is a time consuming okay laborious work so uh, of course we may uh, come to the value of inlet or the exit conditions but it is a iterative procedure number of iterations we have to carry and it is a time bore, time consuming and a boring work so to avoid this uh, iterative procedure iterative procedure when you know the inlet conditions of a heat exchanger uh, the thermal analysis of a heat exchanger knowing the only inlet conditions is carried out by one more method that is called the effectiveness or ntu method ntu is nothing but the uh, number of transfer units method for heat exchanger analysis this ntu is nothing but number of transfer units how many heat units have been transferred from hot fluid to the cold fluid how many heat units have been 
transfer it is a dimensionless parameter this uh, ntu is at uh, ua which is equal to ua by c minimum later you will you will came to know once you develop the expression for effectiveness for parallel as well as counter parallel exchangers you will came to know this ntu is number of transfer units and it will be a measure of a heat exchanger and it will inform how many heat units have been transferred from hot fluid to the cold fluid and it is a dimensionless parameter dimensionless parameter and this method effectiveness of the analysis of heat exchanger by effectiveness was developed first by case and london in the year 1955 this method method of uh, analyzing heat exchanger when you know the the inlet conditions uh, which is known as effectiveness method it was first introduced by uh, case and london uh, in the year 19 55 so they have defined this uh, case and london heat transfer effectiveness as uh, it is denoted by the symbol epsilon this epsilon is given by this uh, equation that is uh, it is a ratio it is a effectiveness in nothing but a ratio of actual heat transfer rate to the maximum possible heat transfer rate that is equal to q by q max the heat transfer effectiveness is defined it is denoted by the symbol epsilon and it is denoted by the symbol epsilon and which is a ratio of actual heat transfer rate to the maximum possible heat transfer rate q by q max and we all know from our uh, we learned thermodynamics uh, the actual heat transfer rate is determined by uh, determined by writing the energy balance heat loss or the heat gain equation so this q is equal to ch specific uh, that is the heat capacity of uh, uh, mass flow rate into specific heat is the heat capacity rate of hot fluid it is ch capital ch into bracket thi minus th not bracket over that is equal to cc heat capacity rate of cold fluid into bracket tc not minus tci this equation you are all familiar from your thermodynamics this heat loss by the hot fluid and heat gain by the cold fluid this is the actual heat transfer rate equation so you can use here suppose if the for a hot fluid you can use this uh, actual heat given up by the hot fluid equation here and suppose if the uh, a cold heat gain equation by the cold fluid you can write the this uh, heat gain equation by the this is the actual heat transfer rate then question arises how to find this maximum possible heat transfer rate heat transfer uh, how to find this maximum possible heat transfer rate and when this maximum heat transfer will occur this maximum heat transfer within the heat exchanger will occur when one of the fluids undergo a temperature change equal to the maximum temperature difference maximum heat transfer will occur when one of the fluids undergo a temperature change equal to the maximum temperature difference now you can take an example of a counter flow heat exchanger so the one fluid both fluids are moving in the opposite direction you know the temperature difference available at the inlet of the heat exchanger is delta t1 and temperature difference available at the uh, exit of the heat exchanger is delta 2 now cold fluid is entering at the other end suppose if the cold fluid undergo a change in temperature that is equivalent to the inlet temperature of the hot fluid then this clearly indicates that the cold fluid has undergone a maximum change temperature ch difference available within the heat exchanger in this case the cold fluid is having minimum heat capacity rate suppose if the hot fluid undergo a maximum change in temperature available within the heat exchanger then it is entering with th1 or thi suppose when it comes out of the heat exchanger if, if its temperature is equal to the inlet temperature of the cold cold fluid that is tc1 or tci then under this situation the cold fluid has undergone a maximum temperature change available within the heat exchanger the maximum temperature difference available within the heat exchanger so then in this case the hot fluid is having minimum heat capacity rate so when one of the fluid is having 
minimum heat capacity rate and if it is undergoing a temperature change equal to the maximum temperature change difference available within the heat exchanger then maximum heat transfer will occur so here it is given cold fluid has to be heated to the temperature of the hot fluid just now i given I explained or hot fluid has to be cooled to the inlet temperature of the cold fluid if these two are possible then when it is possible this is possible when one of the fluid is having the minimum heat capacity rate either hot fluid may have minimum heat capacity rate or cold fluid may may be having the minimum heat capacity rate so this limiting condition will be reached if ch is equal to cc then under this situations the limiting condition is reached if ch is equal to cc suppose if ch is not equal to cc okay if ch is not equal to cc then the fluid with smaller heat capacity rate will undergo a maximum temperature change okay for maximum heat transfer has to occur ch must not be equal to cc then only the fluid with smaller heat capacity rate will undergo a maximum temperature change hence what we can say the maximum heat transfer within the heat exchanger is possible when one of the fluid is having a minimum heat capacity rate that is let me denote it by c minimum okay then the maximum possible heat transfer rate within the heat exchanger is q max is given by it is a again uh mcp delta t equation c minimum it is a heat capacity rate of the one of the fluid which is having the minimum value c minimum which is a product of mass flow rate into it's a specific heat multiplied by into bracket thi minus tci because why it is thi one of the fluid has to undergo a change in temperature equivalent to temperature of the inlet either either inlet or exit condition of the other fluid okay with this now let us develop an expression for the effectiveness of a parallel flow heat exchanger let us develop an expression for the effectiveness of a parallel flow heat exchanger consider a parallel flow heat exchanger as you are observing in the sketch or the figure 5.14 a parallel flow heat exchanger with temperature distribution the this is a heat exchanger in which the colored one you can see the hot fluid is flowing through the tube and the either annular section or the cell side you can say the cold fluid is entering here and it is moving in the same direction as that of the hot fluid as that of the hot fluid and this is the temperature distribution this is the delta t1 tem temperature difference available at the inlet of the heat exchanger delta t2 is the temperature difference available at the exit of the heat exchanger now let us consider a small elemental area at a distance x from the reference line da and temperature difference available at the inlet of the elemental area is delta t and dt dth is the heat uh, that uh, temperature change that the cold fluid has undergone and this dtc is the temperature change that the cold fluid has undergone now heat transfer from hot fluid to cold fluid through an elemental area is given by this equation dq is equal to u da delta t u da delta t heat given up by the hot fluid it is a through elemental through this elemental area dq is equal to minus mh cph dth it is with negative sign because cold fluid is lose sorry hot fluid is losing its heat all along the length of the heat exchanger and heat gained by the cold fluid again through this elemental area under consideration it is dq is equal to plus mc cpc dts why it is plus because if you observe the sketch here you can see the cold fluid temperature keeps on increases all along the length of the heat exchanger considered whereas the hot fluid temperature keeps on decreases hence it is you know from thermodynamics whenever there is a rejection of heat heat is rejected from the hot fluid to the cold fluid it is with negative sign uh, and there is a gain in the heat of the cold fluid with the hence it is with positive sign that's why it is given heat gained by the cold fluid dq is equal to plus with a plus sign heat addition mc cpc dth where cph and cpc are the specific heats of both hot and cold fluids dth and dtc are the changes in the temperatures of hot and cold fluids through this elemental area now temperature difference between the hot and cold fluids is given by this expression d delta sorry delta t equal to th minus tc tc 
now the same temperature difference for a elemental area between hot and cold fluids over an elemental area we can write it as d delta t equal to dth minus dtc if you combine these equations 5.38 5.39 and 5.41 d delta t will equal to minus dq by mh cph minus dq by mc cpc in terms of heat capacity rates of hot and cold fluids that is capital ch and capital cc this heat capacity rate is nothing but the product of mass flow rate and specific heat of the hot and cold fluids we can write this d delta t as minus dq by ch minus dq by cc if you substitute the value of dq that is dq is equal to uda delta t we know from equation 5.37 here that is uda delta t we have to substitute in place of dq uh, this delta t is taken over here it is d delta t by delta t it is minus uda uh, minus sign is taken out so it is 1 by ch plus 1 over cc integrating this equation 5.44 between the inlet and exit conditions inlet and exit conditions that is inlet Uh, temperature conditions temperature difference available at the inlet is delta t1 temperature difference available at exit is delta t2 it is integral of d delta by delta t between the limits delta t1 and delta t2 here minus u 1 over ch plus 1 over cc is a constant take it out because it remains for in any heat exchanger this heat capacity rate will remain constant then only variable is this area because area will change from 0 to so some value a you can say now at this instant of time perform let us perform the integration and if you substitute the limits perform the integration and substituting the limits so uh, if you after substituting the limits you will get land delta t2 by because integral of d delta t by delta t is the land delta t substituting limits it is delta t2 by delta t1 is equal to minus ua integral of da is a it is into bracket 1 over ch plus 1 over cc let us just rearrange uh, this uh, equation 5.45 it is delta t2 by delta t1 is equal to exponential into bracket minus ua 1 over ch plus 1 over cc now let us substitute the delta substitute for delta t1 and delta t2 delta t1 is the temperature difference available at the inlet of the heat exchanger delta t2 is the temperature difference available at the exit of the heat exchanger this delta t1 is the thing but what thi minus tci which is substituted here and delta t2 is for a parallel flow heat exchanger it is th not minus tc not is equal to exponential minus ua into bracket 1 over ch plus 1 over cc bracket over and we have defined the expression for the effectiveness of a heat exchanger that is given by you have seen it is given by the equation 5.34 that and denoted by the symbol epsilon for a hot fluid it is actual heat transfer rate to the maximum possible heat transfer it is ch into thi minus th not divided by this maximum possible heat transfer we just now we have Uh, uh learned how when there will be a maximum amount of heat transfer occurs within the heat exchanger that is possible uh, when one of the fluid is having minimum heat capacity rate that is c minimum into the inlet difference of inlet conditions of hot and cold fluid that is thi minus tci similarly the actual heat transfer rate in with respect to cold fluid that is the heat gain equation cc into tc not minus tci bracket over divided by c minimum into thi minus tci with this equation now let us find out here i need to eliminate this exit temperatures because uh, when you are do analyzing heat exchangers with effectiveness method we know only the inlet condition so hence eliminate the exit temperatures of hot fluid and exit temperature of cold fluid by using this effectiveness equation using this effectiveness equation expression for exit temperature of hot fluid is given by this expression th not is equal to thi minus f epsilon into c minimum into bracket thi minus tci divided by ch similarly the expression for exit temperature of cold fluid uh, using that equation 5.48 is given by tc not is equal to tci plus epsilon c minimum into bracket thi minus tci divided by capital cc that is the ch and cc are the heat capacity rates of hot and cold fluids respectively so now let us eliminate the temperature terms exit temperature terms that is th not and tc not from equation 5.47 using equations 5.49 and 
equation 5.50. If you substitute, now let us, it is 1 over, this is already there, THI minus TCI. So let's substitute for TH naught. So if you go to previous equation, what is that equation? TH naught minus TC naught. So here, 1 over THI minus TCI, it is THI minus TCI, some common factor have been taken over, epsilon into C minimum, THI minus TCI, 1 over CH plus CC, just it is a simple uh, uh, rearrangement of the terms here, uh, substitute and rearrange the terms here, uh, exponential into bracket 1 minus UA by CH, uh, CH is taken out here, hence it is 1 plus CH by CC, the same equation what you are using, uh, uh, that uh, in terms of th this equation number 5.47 so it is now now let us eliminate this again take this thi minus tci as a common factor here common factor here so that is also eliminated so when you eliminate this this thi minus tci divided by thi minus tci it is 1 minus epsilon c minimum into this taking a, after taking a common factor 1 over ch plus 1 over cc is equal to exponential minus ua by ch into bracket 1 plus ch by cc so after rearranging the terms what you will get it is uh, now we will get the expression for epsilon it is 1 minus exponential minus ua by c minimum 1 plus ch by cc divided by c minimum into 1 over ch plus cc now let us assume suppose if cc is greater than ch cc is greater than ch then CH is C minimum and CC is C max. If you substitute these conditions in equation number 5.53, 5.53, we will get this equation, epsilon. Then the equation 5.53 becomes, epsilon is equal to 1 minus exponential into bracket minus UA by C minimum. Now CH is C minimum, so it is 1 plus C minimum by CX divided by C minimum into 1 over C minimum plus 1 by C max. Suppose at the if you assume this CC is less than CH, suppose if you assume CC is less than CH, then CC is C minimum and CH is C max. So if you substitute these conditions in equation number 5.53, so this epsilon will become, epsilon is equal to, that is effectiveness uh, of a heat exchanger, parallel flow heat exchanger, 1 minus exponential minus UA by C minimum, 1 plus C max by C minimum, divided by C minimum into bracket 1 by C max plus 1 by C minimum. So just let us rearrange the equations, equation 5.54 and uh, equation 5.55. What you will get is rearranging, you will get this effectiveness of a parallel flow heat exchanger is 1 minus exponential minus UA by C minimum into bracket 1 plus C minimum by C max divided by 1 plus C minimum by Cx. Now, this effectiveness of a parallel flow heat exchanger is given by this expression. It is epsilon is equal to 1 minus exponential into bracket minus NTU into bracket 1 plus C bracket over divided by 1 plus C, where this NTU number of transfer units so is equal to UA by C minimum is a dimensionless expression. It gives the information about how many heat units have been transferred from hot fluid to cold fluid and is this NTU is a measure of effectiveness of a heat exchanger, effectiveness of a heat exchanger. And capital C, it is a, again a dimensionless parameter which is equal to C minimum by C max and is known as capacity ratio. This equation, effectiveness equation is available in your heat and mass transfer data handbook and also available in uh, the heat transfer textbooks you need not to remember this equation and it is available in your data handbook and data handbook is provided during the examination just to understand how the heat exchanger is analyzed with LMTD method and effectiveness method. Let me stop. Uh, we will continue in the next class. Thank you.